I am so excited to be here with the one and only Hans Zimmer. Welcome to Dubai, first of all. Thank you very much, and happy birthday to you. Yay, happy birthday to me. This is going to be awesome. I will always remember it for, that, for, for you, good, because good, of good, you. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Now, first of all, we're all super excited about your concert coming up this weekend, but we've also heard that you've been filming around Dubai. Is there any truth around that? And what, 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 are, what are you working on here in the UAE? It's, oh God, what, what a few... Recently, I have been doing. I, I have been drawn to the desert, if you see what I mean. I mean, partly because you know we we, we, we did Dune just in the neighbourhood, you know, not too far away from here. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my last year, etc. But I am very much drawn at the moment to this country, not just because we're doing the concert here, but because I think it's it's. A, a, I I I keep describing it as a diamond in the desert. You know, it's like like. You have the desert, and suddenly this, this amazing thing happens that 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 says, "Oh, this this could be the future of mankind. This could be the future of science. It could be the future of philosophy. It could be the future of culture. It could be the future of uh, enterprise and economics." So, um, what am I doing here? I, I'm I'm looking at everything, and I'm going, "This is really exciting. This is this is extraordinary. This is." Are we going to find a Hans Zimmer uh, studio here? Come on, we want to hear it first. <laughs> if, you, if you want to hear it, for, well. Oh, there's uh, something yes, cooking. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there has been thinking going on about that. No, no, and because, because I think it would be great. I mean, one of the things that I can bring in a peculiar way is I can bring something, uh, I can bring people together through music. And I think bringing people together through art or whatever so, somehow does all sorts of things. It, it brings other interesting, it brings other interesting people together. It brings scientists together. They suddenly, oh look, suddenly you find that that they're, they're interesting economists and scientists. They're all fans of music, and and if if we if we can bring cult, uh, bring more culture, make 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 more international things happen here. I mean, I, I keep thinking, I keep thinking of this place. It, I, it's probably totally wrong. So just just. Tell me when I'm <laughs> go completely for it, go wrong. For it. But I keep thinking, I'm looking at this tree and it's only 51 years old, but it's got roots that go into the earth for thousands of years. And so there's, there's all this stuff, there's all this culture, there's all this knowledge, there's all this wisdom that can come to the surface. And, and um, right now, I think the world is in, a, in an, an extraordinary bad place. I mean, wherever, wherever I go, the world is in a bad place. I come here, the world, the world is positive and looking forward. Oh, well, that's refreshing to hear. It is refreshing. Thank you very much on behalf of the UAE. Well, I, no, no, I mean, I'm, but, 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 I, but I'm, I'm serious about it. I really am serious about mm. this. I'm, I am, uh, I'm excited about, uh, you can not not be excited about the, the ambition of this Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the possibilities of this place. Endless possibilities, we like to say. Now, you're often inspired by the music and cultural tra traditions from across the world. Has there been any, any sounds or anything that's inspired you here in the UAE or in the Middle East? Well, well to, to be really honest, I mean, <laughs> I have been um, borrowing sounds from the Middle East forever, forever, forever. Uh, and it, it, it's, a funny, it's a funny thing, I mean, I, I've always done this. I, I am a European and I will write as a European and I hate this idea of, of cultural imperialism where you just steal all the great cliches of all the great music that people make over here. But what I like doing is I like um, writing my music and giving it to the people and going, okay, here it is, see it as a sketch. now." show me what your culture would do with it and, and see what happens when... Actually, what's more... It's, 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 I was doing this going, oh, when cultures sort of um, connect. But what's much more interesting is when cultures collide. Oh. You, know, you know, something totally new and unexpected comes out of it. So we'll... we'll you know, you know, those are the things that I'm sort of interested in at the moment. Because I, I, I think this, this, this very place is very much that, where you, where you feel um, the, you know, its underlying philosophy seems to be, or its, maybe, maybe even its unconscious philosophy seems to be 
that things, you know, different world cultures are colliding and, and at the same time it, it, it still very much keeps this, its identity of, of, of the Middle East. Now, your portfolio is so diverse, you know, the Batman trilogy, Kung Fu Panda, Planet Earth, even Call of Duty. What makes you say yes to a project? Because I think the best thing in life you could do is when somebody tells you something interesting, and ask you to do something, say yes, and then lock yourself away and go, oh my God, how am I going to do this, <laughs> right? And then. As soon as you go, oh my God, how am I going to do this? Um, you're, you're on the right path because what, what you're doing is you, you, you're now researching, you're now learning, you're now, it's all questions. And questions are always more interesting than the answers. I mean, your job, you, you have the better part of the two of us right now because, you, you know, you get to ask the questions, you know, and my answers are usually not as fascinating as your questions will be. And and that's, that's why I love saying yes to things because it, all, all, all that happens is I'm going to surround myself by questions. You know, how, how am I going to solve this? How, 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 are, we, how are we going to make sense out of any of this? Challenge accepted. Absolutely. <laughs> now, while most composers are known for coming at a later, while most composers are known for coming at a later stage of a project, you're very well known for coming in right at the beginning, even before sometimes a single scene has been filmed, um, and sometimes influencing the overall project. How does that help your work? It doesn't. It helps their work. <laughs> You're like, it's, you it's, owe me it's, more it's money. <laughs> it's really unfair. It's really unfair. No, it's, it's, it's you know, look, um, what we do, um, talk to any composer. They will always tell you the same thing. And I'm going to go and get, get my answer in a sorry, obscure way. Um, when we write something and we record something, the first time we play it to anybody, or play it to the director, etc. I mean, just before we played it to him, it sounded beautiful. It was stereo, or surround, it was big and beautiful and everything. As soon as the director comes in, it just goes, Boom. you know, our own panic in our ears makes it all go mono or something like this. So. The way I overcome these things is by, I, I try to work with friends, you know, and so, and very often, the way you help friends is, is um, you try to inspire them. I mean, I, um, I, mean I, I, asked, I asked the director once why he always wanted the music before he even shot the scene. And he, he said, you know, look, I have 150 people on the set. They're all asking me questions. I always give them answers, etc. But then sometimes I just like to put the headphones on and just listen to a little bit of Zimmer. And, you know, I know I have a partner in crime at that moment in time. I'm not alone. So let's talk a little bit about your recent work. Obviously, you're working on Hello, God, It's Me, Margaret, which no. I am oh, has affected my childhood so much, but also sequels. So Top Gun Maverick and um, Blade Runner 2049, which you recently worked on, but you didn't create these scores for the original film. So how, does, how different is it when you come in and there's already an established sound and you have to build on that? Well, uh, oh, okay, I tell you, the, the, the funny thing with Blade Runner is Blade Runner was an accident. I mean, literally, I was... I was going to go on tour and I get a phone call from my friend Joe Walker, who's the editor mm -hmm. on the film, and he goes, we, we need a little bit of help, and I'm going, you're out of luck, I'm going on tour tomorrow. And I promise you, I put the phone down and the door burst open and Denis Villeneuve and Joe Walker, and then they go, would it make a difference if they asked this friend of mine, Joe, uh, Benjamin Wolfish, to, to, to start on the process, and then when I would have my break in the tour, I would carry on working on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, yes, it would make a difference. Okay, let's go look at it. And of course, I forgot there is a reason I was going to have a break in the middle of the tour. I needed to rest. I mean, there was no rest. It was, that was hard work. Um, and I, following Vangelis' footsteps, I mean, I've known Vangelis as a friend, you know, in the 80s. Uh, I used to go, he used to come see me, I used to go see him. You know, we, we, we hung out a lot together. So, and, and, and Blade Runner, of course, is, is a seminal score. I mean, it's an extraordinary thing. Um, and, and, and I did ask him at one point, you know, if he, if he wanted to come and just 
just just join the band, you know, mm -hmm. because you know why would he want to go and do it again, you know? But he would want to do something, but but he want he. He wanted to stay in Paris, and we wanted to. We needed to work in Los Angeles, so that didn't work out. And then Top Gun. I mean, one of my best friends was Tony Scott. Um, Harold Faltermeyer, who did the original one, is a friend, and I said, "Okay, I'll do it if Harold comes in." You know, so so it, 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 I did it very much to honor the memory of my friend, you know, of, of my friend Tony, and then. You know, I come from a history of having done quite a few Tom Cruise movies, so and, and having done probably more Jerry Brockheimer movies than anybody else. So, so it all felt like family in a way. Um, it was completely accidental that they became such successes. No, actually, that's completely untrue. If, if anybody deserves to be praised for, for their success, it's Tom, who will not Sleep will not let go, is the most precise thinker, is the most precise. You know what I said about questions earlier? Mm -hmm. He always, he has a question within a question within a question. You know, he, th 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 there's a level of perfectionism that goes on that is um, really quite remarkable. Every, everything that's great about that film, in one way or the other, has something to do with the way Tom thought about it. He's not, the, the least, the least thing that he does, and I hope he's not offended by this, is act. <laughs> you know, but it's it's the big ideas that he comes up with. Well, talking about being a perfectionist, how do you know when a project is ready? When your score is ready, do you? Oh, that's do you... that's simple. The money's run out and the time's <laughs> run out, and they take it away from you. You know. But then, do you listen back to completed projects sometimes, even now, and just be like, oh, I could have done this, or I should have oh, done this? Always, oh, always, always. I mean, the reason I did the last, ver you know, the what they call the live action version of Lion King, which of course is not a live action version at all, it's, you know, more computer graphics than you can think of, was because there were a couple of things I wanted to fix from the old one. Do Lion you? King changed my life, and I love that story, by the way, with your daughter and how you were inspired to take part in it inspired. so you could take it to the I wasn't premiere. Inspired. I, w I, I wanted to show off. <laughs> You know, I'm a dad. I wanted to show off. I wanted to take my little girl, and y y you know something which which I think I thought was so fabulous. Um, she was totally unimpressed by people like Elton John, etc. <laughs> but Mr. Bean was there, Rowan Atkinson, oh my goodness. and she thought that was like the coolest. You know, Dad knew Mr. Bean, so that you know, you know, forget about anything else. You know, after a hundred more than 150 films. Apparently. Endless awards. We've got Oscars and Grammys and BAFTA and, and uh, Golden Globe. And do the awards matter? What is it that you know makes you feel pride in your work? What feels like a real success? Tell you that. I'll tell you what that is. It's lengthy. I'll tell you. Um, years ago, before before I even had a career, before before I was even you know when I was begging people for 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 you know, to, 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 to get a meal because, you know, when you start off as a, when you start off as a musician, you basically starve, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I would play all these pubs and clubs, etc., up and down, you know, England, to, um, in the roughest neighborhoods, etc. And I remember playing this one time, Bradford, and it was just, it was all, every time we went to Bradford, it was raining. Every time we went to Bradford, it was miserable. And somewhere, Along the way, I made up this fictitious figure in my head. She's called Doris, and she's got she's of indeterminate age, and she's a single mom. She's got two boys, and they're horrible. And she's just, you know, she works really, really hard, you know, to just put food on the table for them. And the weekend comes, and she now has a choice: she can go to the pub, or she can go and see one of my movies. When she goes and sees one of those movies, the quality of the the quality of the work that we do better be good enough to honor the work that she does, you know, because this is her hard, hard earned money and we, be, we better live up to it. You know, so that, that's, so, so I sit there very often, I just go, oh, what would Doris say? 
Yeah. Who's Doris inspired by? Is that your mother by any no, chance? No, no, no. It's, it's completely fictitious. It's just so, somebody I saw walking along the street, and I, and I sort of made up the story in my head. You know. I like it. Now, what's still on your bucket list? Any projects that you have yet to complete? You're still really eager to get on? Yeah, I would like to write something that I can actually go, and that's the one. You know. Um, but yeah, that's good enough. I, I, I would like to do that one. After all, everything you've done, you don't feel like, oh, I've got that perfect, this is, this is my baby? No, none of them are perfect. <laughs> you know? um, In your opinion, but... Yeah. No, 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 no. No, I, I think, no, I think, and, and I think my opinion counts for something in this. I think it can be better. You know, and, and I, I, somebody asked me recently, I mean, I'm 65 years old, and they go, you know, hey, I'm 65 years old, I'm touring, I'm, I'm on stage, I'm doing all sorts of crazy things, and somebody says, when are you going to slow it down? And as, as they were saying it, I was, go, I was going, what do you mean? I'm just getting going, I'm just getting ideas, I'm just getting excited about things, you know, leave me alone, let, let me do, let me, let me try these things, you know, I still have you know, worlds to explore, things to blow up, you know, um, executives and studios to weep quietly as they drive home to their wives, you know. Um, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, I, I still have little, small little revolutions to make every day. I remember seeing you in an interview saying, my biggest fear is that the, the phone will stop ringing. And yes. that just blew my mind, that that's something that you're concerned about. I, I, oh, I, I, I have reason to be concerned for, <laughs> about that. Um, look, the world is changing rapidly. The world really is changing rapidly. I mean, you know, in, uh, in the late 70s, I was involved in a song called Video Killed the Radio Star. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And it became the first video on MTV. And I'm not saying it to brag or anything like this. I'm just saying, oh, we had this idea that things were going to change. And then they changed, and then they had this thing called MTV. And now things are completely different. And then, and then, and then suddenly, you know, like I had this idea that, it, you know, this, this, this idea that touring would be a good thing. You know, I wanted, to, I, it wasn't actually my idea, it was, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to, to name drop, but I, but I have to give credit where credit is due. It's Jolly Ma and, um, and Pharrell Williams who were sitting me down and saying, after 40 years, you have to look an audience in the eye. You, you owe it to them to do real time, to not hide behind a screen. So I went, okay, we'll go, we'll go on tour. As soon as we started touring, COVID, lockdown, yeah. right? So the world is constantly changing. And I'm, I, 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 ha, I, I am right in thinking that the phone might stop ringing. Out of, we don't know what the reasons are. You know, part of, part of the reasons are is because I can be I can be a handful, you know. I can be a handful, when, you know, to, to work with. But um, because I have ideas, you know, and sometimes, sometimes people don't really want ideas. They always, it's always the same thing. Every film, you're being asked to do something new. So you, so you kill yourself to do something new, and then you play them something new for the first time, and they all go, "Ooh, it's a bit new. It's a bit." Oh, we didn't expect that. We really, really, what we meant was we wanted the music from the last thing that was a big hit, oh. just different, you know. Um, so, so now I say, you know, please, just, just give it a bit of time, you know. Let it not be so new. In a week's time, you might actually li quite like it. So you've obviously got your academy, which you're well known for. What are you looking for in that next? great composer? Who's someone that stands out to you? Um, oh, oh God. They're, 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 it's, every day I run into people that... No, that's, that's totally untrue. It's not every day. <laughs> I, every day I run into people who are, who are really very good musicians, but it's only occasionally that, that you find truly astonishing composers. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, my friend John Powell, who I've known forever. Um, Astonishing talent, Aston I mean, ju just just mind blowing talent. Um, I mean, apart, you know, you, as soon as you put me on the spot and you go and name the composers that you think are going to be 
the next great composers. You know, well, you know, Johnny Greenwood, you know, from from Radiohead. Yes, he will be. He is already a great composer. I mean, the, 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 there's a whole bunch of people, but it's not it's not really that. I think I think the other thing that is happening is that the that we are becoming more international. You know that the sound of the European or orchestra, and how, however much I love them, and I, if we lose the orchestra, you know, one of the things I fight for all the time is, you know, that we keep the orchestra, that, that the orchestra is part of our culture, because where else do you get this in, in, in mankind, where you have a hundred people sitting down, and you go, you know, they all, you, you take a deep breath together, and as you exhale, and they play the first note, it's beautiful. Hundred people. Wow, that's that that is amazing. I mean, hundred dogs in a room, not quite the same thing. But um, what is happening is, is is that the 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 straight European, Western European orchestra is starting to lose its relevancy unless they start to branch out and include other cultures in it. And I think that's where it's starting to get really interesting. That suddenly we realized that it's not like we have run out of stories. It's just we can broaden our horizon. We can broaden our view. That's beautiful. So just lastly, one final question. And I think, I'm sure you, you get do? asked this. Okay, I'm on, sure you on, get on. asked this I have time. a question. So, what are you doing for your birthday tonight? What's you know going what? on? What's happening? I'm a mom now. The boys are throwing me oh. <laughs> a little dinner party at home Great. with the grandparents. And with the, we went out with, the, with our right. friends yesterday to the desert. Right. It's cute. Uh, I'm a mom now. I don't party okay. anymore. No, this no, is no, as no, exciting no. as it but, gets. But, no, no, no. But, 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 but are they baking the cake? Because yes. I, used, I used to bake cakes for my mom, and they were totally inedible. Mm -hmm. They were really bad. I think it's out of the box, so it's not okay, too complicated. Good, good, good. But yeah. yeah, so hopefully it's edible and I can smile right. my way okay. through it. <laughs> All right. Okay, final question. Okay. How would you like to be remembered? I think that's the question everyone asks how do you. I, no, nobody asks me. Well, nobody how asks I, how you would that? I like to be remembered? I'd like to not be remembered because I wouldn't, I don't like to, I, want I don't to live like forever. the dying part, right? How, how would I like to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered as somebody who said yes a lot, loved his life, was loved by uh, a woman that he loves deeply, um, whose children think he's cool and, um, you know, not too awful and not too embarrassing. And that's about it, you know? That sounds I mean, pretty wonderful. Yeah. It's like, oh, God, you know, I don't want my kids to ever think I'm an embarrassment. <laughs> I don't know if you can avoid that, but yeah. Well, thank you so much, Hans. Thank you. I'll see you this weekend. Okay, great. Well, I'll see you. You won't see me, but I'll be. Okay, all right. I know him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be careful about this because I, I, I remember doing this show in Paris and in like row 50 or so, I'm suddenly, in, I'm in the middle of something and I'm noticing somebody I know. Like? And I, yeah, and I'm starting to have this, I forget the audience, I forget everything. I'm just start having this conversation. With, we're, we're, we're shouting back and forth and finally somebody in the band comes and goes, we play the next song. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're there's thousands of it. That's right. totally going to be this weekend. Me. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. You've been amazing. Well, enjoy your birthday. Thank you.